Hi YouTube, it's AC Dodd here again, and welcome to part two of Can We Save This Lead Acid Car Battery? So, after about 10 hours, we've reached our peak voltage, and the current has now started to drop. So we're on our way. So, another five or six hours, we should be seeing the equalisation charge completed. Okay, so it's uh, 24 hours since we finished um, uh, doing the equalisation charge. So let's have a look. So we've got oh, a nice improved uh, standing voltage, 12.94, that's excellent. So that's looking good. So let's run through and do our test and see if we've see if we've improved. So we have uh, it still says replace battery, but now we're at 223 uh, cranking amps uh, as opposed to uh, what it was before, which was something like 190 something. So we've improved a little bit. Um, and our resistance has come down from 16 milliohms down to 14. So uh, state of health, 57. So yeah, not bad, uh, a little improvement. So uh, you may think we're finished there, but now we need to move on to the next stage, which is effectively put the battery on a treadmill. So we're gonna do some uh, uh, discharging and some recharging and some discharging and some more recharging and just to see what happens. Uh, at this point, I still, I still don't know whether this battery is gonna come back or not, um, but you can only try. So this is the problem with this process of trying to rejuvenate a battery, is you don't actually know unless you try. Um, so it can be quite a wasteful experience if you get to the end and your battery's not useful, but as I say, you have to be in it to win it. So let's move on to the next stage. So the next test we're going to do, or the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to make the battery work. Now in this case, uh, instead of um, putting a heavy discharge on it, what we're actually going to do is we're going to uh, discharge the battery at a slower rate. So in this case, about 10 amps. So this is a this is a one ohm load, uh, and it's got uh, a cut. It's a custom built unit. Uh, it has a voltage display on it, and it also. Um, monitors the time so i can get get an idea of the actual capacity of the battery so let's get this started we we'll put the load on and we'll start discharging and we'll work out from this roughly the uh, capacity of what's in the battery at the moment and then we'll recharge and then retest again so we did our first discharge and if we look at the uh, reading there, I don't know if you can see that, but that gives us 2.7 hours. There we go. So that's actually extremely good. Uh, so that's basically given us, um, on this test anyway, that is equivalent to about the full 45 amp hours. So uh, unusually, we're getting the full capacity of the battery. Um, so that's very interesting. Now. This battery is stood after being recharged for four days and we've still got over 13 volts at the terminals. So that looks encouraging as well. So let's go for the second discharge. See what happens this time. Okay, so we've now completed three cycles of charge and discharge. So the last one, We've got 2.3 hours, so that's actually increased by one, uh, 0.1 of a, an hour, which is excellent. So that's going in the right direction. So what we're gonna do now is just give that a, a test on the Foxwell tester, just to see where we are. Uh, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do one final, uh, one final go at this to see if I can bring it forward. But uh, let's get the tester on and see where we are. Okay, so with the analyzer back on, we've got 13.29 volts. Now that's interesting again, because that's been standing four days now since that was recharged after the last set of cycles. So we're actually improving this all the time, which is really good. But the question is, is, is the battery actually improving? So let's have a quick look. So 13.29, so we've got 228 cranking, um, and it still says replace battery. 
and we come down a little bit on the resistance, the internal resistance, and the state of health is at about 58. So uh, it doesn't look like it's improving that much, although it has improved a little bit. So what we're now going to do is I'm going to give it a quite a hard, uh, about as hard as I dare, um, uh, equalisation. So I'm going to take it up to 17 volts to do that. Um, and this, if this doesn't work, then I think the battery is at the point where we're not going to improve it anymore. So, how am I going to do that? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to use this cracking little charger from PZP. Um, I've only seen a few of these about, but they're tiny little units. But the beauty about them is they're actually fully adjustable. So you can set the voltage, the charging voltage, to anywhere that you want from 12 to 17.5 volts. So in this case, I'm going to set that to 17 volts. Then, just turn the current down. I'm going to connect that to the battery and then we'll commence the charge rate. Now what we're going to do is I'll increase that to a maximum of 4.5. There you go. We'll leave that on now and that'll bring the voltage on the battery up to 70 and it'll finish the equalisation process off. We'll leave that a number of hours until that comes right down to about an amp or so then hopefully that will take out the rest of the sulfation and bring up our specific uh, or reduce our specific resistance inside our internal resistance to see if we can get that battery up to full power all right but you can only do things like that with a battery charger like this or a bench power supply would do the same thing so just in case you worry uh, you're wondering about the, um, the current I always use on this is about four and a half amps well basically what I do is I just use that's the amp hour rating and I'll just use 10% of the amp hour rating which is four and a half amps so that's where I'll get that from so we're going to leave that now on that charger and see what see what we get So we've been running about half an hour now, and as we can see, we're at 17 volts, and it's now down to 2.74 amps. So it's come down fairly quickly, but now we've got to the point where it's working on the rest of that sulfation. So hopefully, this last uh, attempt will improve that battery to a point where it may be usable. So it's taken six hours before the current has started to drop. So we can tell, that there was definitely an issue inside that battery. Um, that equalisation really needed to work on the sulfation that was in there. So that's just starting to drop now. So we're going to need to leave this probably for another six hours for that to come right down. And then we'll get back to testing. Okay, so that's after about, uh, what have we got on there? About 10 hours, something like that. We're down to one point. 1.8 amps so we're nearly there just keep going for a bit longer and we'll be able to do the final testing so where did we get to after the last lot of or the second round of equalization charge at 17 volts i've done a discharge and a, a full recharge so let's put this on here now which will be the final uh results of all this work So let's go through and see where we get. So we've now got 236. So we've increased a tiny little bit. So what does that tell us? We've now got 13.5 milliohms. So we've, we've reduced that milliohms down to about the lowest it's probably going to get to. State of health is 60. So, yeah. Um, what's that now telling us? It still says replace battery. So, what have we achieved? Well, 
I think we need to do a discharge test, heavy discharge test, and see what the results of that tell us. Heavy discharge tester is now connected. We've got a little bit of surface charge. So what I'm gonna do, because it's just come off the charger and we've not waited, I'm just gonna take a few amps out of that to, so that just put a 100 amp load on it just to knock that down. Okay, that's better. So that just takes, takes the surface charge off of that. So that takes it down to 12.6, so give it a fair test. So what we're now gonna do is we'll now put the 170 amp load on, which is there, and we're now nine volts. So looking at that scale, is that good? Not good enough. And see where that recovers to that's still recovering to 12.4 which is good now interestingly i tested that 170 amps but there is actually another test that you can do on here which is to use the amp hour rating to do the test so this is a 45 amp battery so let's move that to 45 which will actually equal slightly less current so we put that to 45 And see what that reads. Now that one is showing up. It's just about serviceable. So you see, depends what current you load it at as to what you actually get. So what does that actually mean for our battery? Well, what it actually means is that this battery is marginal, right? At, at uh, delivering starting current. So if you add this on a mini and you were using an inertia starter motor I think you'd have problems but if you was using a modern high torque starter motor I think that battery would be absolutely fine because we're also getting a good full amp power capacity so unusually this battery has been able to maintain its maximum capacity it's just got a little bit higher internal resistance than what you would normally have from a starting battery. So although this battery uh, isn't really serviceable for uh, to go back in with a normal starter motor, actually, this is this is actually returned to the point where this would make a good battery for a, uh, a modern uh, gear reduction starter motor, or it would make a, a, a spare battery around the workshop or Maybe you just wanted a jump starting battery, things like that. This might be suitable for that, but I wouldn't recommend using this battery for everyday service unless you had a gear reduction starter. Uh, the other good thing about it is you could actually use it for charging other batteries uh, like your phones and things like that because it does actually have a full capacity. So to answer our question, has this process been worth it? Well, in this case, um, we didn't know that this battery was serviceable. Uh, we've actually managed to get it back to a point where it can be used for certain things, but uh, we haven't managed to get it fully serviceable for everyday use for a normal car. So uh, in this case, we have failed to get this battery back to full health, but with, without doing this process, we wouldn't know that. I hope you found that useful. Um, they don't always come back. That's uh, That particular battery did uh, something that I've never seen before, which is actually come back to full amp hour capacity. Um, but uh, its internal resistance didn't quite come down low enough for it to be uh, uh, suitable for full service. But uh, nonetheless, um, it holds a charge. Um, it will actually crank a um, modern gear reduction starter motor, so it could be used in those applications. Anyway... Um, that was a purely electrical way of rejuvenating a battery. I used, there was no chemicals used, etc. Um, so the reason why I did it is so that just giving people the opportunity to see another way and a way I've done it over, over the years and I've done many batteries. Anyway, hopefully you found that useful. As ever, like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.